Story 1 by Reddit user XXGalaxyGabXX. Hello everyone, this is my first post. I had considered writing down all of my paranormal experiences in the past, but I just never got around to it and only spoke of them to people I know. Until now. I had moved to the Hudson Valley region in upstate New York when I was 12 with my mother and stepfather. My mum had had many paranormal experiences before this point, but I didn't know them yet. I myself had never experienced anything that I can remember before moving into our townhouse apartment. I don't know if there's any order to these memories because they all blur together, but I digress. The first thing that comes to mind is how terrified I was of the woods behind the apartment complex. It wasn't a massive forest by any means, but it was a good half mile of dense trees. Unfortunately, the garbage disposal, the recycling bin and the laundromat were all beside said woods, and even in the daytime, you couldn't see much behind the initial line of trees. Oftentimes, I would be the one to take the garbage and recycling out, or I was the one doing the laundry and since I had school and after-school activities, I would be doing these chores at night. I had always run at full speed to either the shack that held the bins or the laundromat, do the chore that needed doing when safely inside, and then run back to my townhouse as soon as I was done. The reason for that was that I would always feel something watching me from those woods, as if I were a frightened rabbit that could sense a hungry fox nearby. Whenever I was alone next to those woods at night, I felt like prey. This leads me to my first experience. I was playing soccer with my cousin as it was getting dark, our family inside the house chatting and no neighbours in sight. My cousin kicked the ball a little too hard and it landed only a few feet away from the tree line. Not thinking much of it, I rushed over to grab it. When I bent down to pick it up, though, I saw the legs of a shadowy figure standing in front of me. I stood up quickly and, too scared to take a good look at whatever it was, I ran over to my cousin and told him what happened. As soon as I turned to point it out, whatever it was, was gone. This next experience is probably the one that haunts me the most. There was a walking path behind the apartments that led to the road on the other side of the woods. About halfway down the path, there was an abandoned house with a small overgrown field and what I think was wheat growing beside it the woods, surrounding the area on all sides. A neighbour kid and I decided to walk the path before it got dark, and we passed by the house without really looking at it. As we were heading back, my neighbour stopped in his tracks and smacked my arm to get my attention, saying, What is that? I followed his gaze to find a tall figure standing in the field, well above the stalks, which had to have at least been five feet high. The thing had the body of a man, but from its head came these long antlers. I froze for just a moment, staring in disbelief. When the neighbour kid grabbed my arm and yelled, Run! We booked it home and after parting ways that evening, we never spoke of the incident again. The last story is actually my mum's. It was late, probably around midnight, and everyone was in the house but my mum was asleep upstairs. She couldn't sleep so she stayed up watching TV until she felt tired. In the middle of the show, she heard what sounded like a small kitten mewling outside the living room window. She ignored it, and the noise stopped. So she continued with her show. Once again, she heard the sound of a kitten crying, so she paused the TV and went outside. She looked everywhere, but she couldn't find anything. Before going back inside, though, she heard the sound again, this time underneath our family car in the parking lot, a good ten feet away from the original sound. She walked up to the car and looked underneath it, as well as under the surrounding cars, but again, she found nothing. Feeling like she was losing her mind, she turned to go back inside when she heard the mewling again, but this time it was coming from the tree line which was nearly 20 feet from the car. She told me she felt a shiver run down her spine as she realised the mewling sounded like it was on a loop. Feeling as though something was trying to lure her into the woods, she turned on her heels and ran back to the house, locking the deadbolt on the door as soon as she got inside. 
She and I have had discussions about these experiences a lot, and she wonders if it was a Wendigo or some other kind of cryptid. What do you think? Story 2 By Reddit user DoomDragon682 I used to be a normal person. I worked an average job in retail, I had a girlfriend and apartment, and I had a good relationship with my parents. Then, it all came crashing down on me like the sky. I was laid off my job due to budget cuts, my girlfriend left me, and my parents died in a car wreck. To be honest, it all sounded a bit cliché villain origin story, but I tried to stay optimistic. I was a young man with my whole life ahead of me. I wasn't going to let this ruin me. I was my parents' only child, so I got their house and money in the will, but instead of moving in, I sold the house. I can't say if it was stress or just stupidity that made me do what I did next, but I'll let you choose. I decided to hike across country. I don't know why I did it, or what I expected, but I guess I figured I needed some time to clear my mind, get things organised emotionally, you know? It actually went really well. I met all kinds of interesting people and got to see all kinds of amazing sights. But that changed when I got to the Appalachian Mountains. I had been walking for so long I thought my feet would fall off. I checked my map for the hundredth time and sighed. It would probably be a day or more until I made it to the next town. I looked up at the sky and realised that the clouds were so full and heavy, I thought they'd fall on my head. That definitely worried me. None of my camping gear was strong enough to survive a rainstorm. I started looking for shelter when I came across an old cabin. It was hidden in the shadows of the trees and I almost missed it. As soon as I noticed it though, the sky let loose a massive crack of thunder and it felt like it would shake the world apart. And I swore I heard another sound mixed in with it, like the screech of some kind of bird. I shook my head and chuckled a bit at the thought. All this time by myself might be getting to me. As I quickly made my way to the cabin, as if on cue, the sky let loose. Sheets of rain crashed down from the sky. The wind picked up out of nowhere and blew so hard I thought it would uproot the trees or tear the cabin to shreds. Lucky for me, though, it held. The old wood creaking together and the windows rattle, but it held together. I surveyed my surroundings and quickly realised that this place couldn't have been inhabited. A thick layer of dust covered the floor and cobwebs filled the corners. I pulled a flashlight from my backpack and wandered around. Pictures hung from the wall, depicting a smiling man, woman and young girl. There was an old kitchen and dining table, but not much of interest. I found stairs leading to the second floor and decided to check it out. I might be there for a while, and didn't see the harm in exploring. Upstairs there were three doors two on the left and one on the right. I also noticed that one door on each side was slightly ajar. I assumed it was the parents' room, their daughter's room, and probably a guest room. I went to the room on the left and tried the door. It swung open with an ominous creak. I slowly surveyed the room and felt a chill run down my spine. It looked like a crime scene. The bed was ripped to shreds. I saw dark stains that I could only assume to be blood, and there were massive claw marks on the floor. What the hell happened here? Had a bear got in and attacked them? As I looked around, I saw something poking out of the other side of the bed. I went around to investigate, and saw it was a rifle. I picked it up and looked it over. It was old and dusty, but didn't seem damaged. I checked to see if it was loaded and was surprised to find out that it was. Only one bullet was missing. I decided to take it with me. No telling if whatever did this might come back. Or something worse. I stepped back into the hall and made my way to the next room. I was worried what I'd find, but morbid curiosity compelled me to keep going. I found that this door, unlike the parents and the third, was shut. I slowly opened the door and was surprised to find it was in much better condition. There were no claw marks on the floor or blood or anything like that. As I surveyed the room, 
I figured it had to be the daughters. The walls were painted pink, and there were several old dusty stuffed animals laying on the floor. I felt relieved that she seemed to evade or maybe escape whatever had taken the parents. But if she had, then what had happened to her? The beam of my flashlight landed on her nightstand, where I saw a book resting. I picked it up and realised it was a diary. Oddly enough, I was hesitant to read it. I didn't like invading anyone's privacy, but in this situation, I thought it was appropriate. Maybe there was a clue as to what happened, or who they were. Eventually, I caved in and read the last few entries. They were written in a hasty, messy handwriting that was to be expected of a child. What I gathered was that the family that lived here got snowed in during a blizzard. They were low on food, and one day, a stranger appeared at the door. Then, the entries stopped. Had the strange man been responsible? Did he kill the parents and kidnap the girl? I stepped back into the hallway and looked at the final door. I'm not sure what I expected to find, but I took a deep breath and pushed it open. I let out a sharp gasp at what I saw. This room was just as bad as the parents. Blood stained the floors and the torn bed, but there were clear signs of a struggle as well. Two things stuck out to me. The first being that, unlike the parents' room, there were no claw marks gouged into the floors and walls of this room. The second was a large rusty butcher's knife laying on the floor near the bed. I quickly left the room and made my way downstairs. I was deeply unsettled by what I had found and unsure of what to do. I couldn't leave the cabin yet. The storm was still raging hard and it was nearly night. I made my way to the kitchen and decided to sit on the floor against a wall. I almost sat in a chair, but it fell apart in my hands. I rested my head against a wall and felt my eyes growing heavy. I figured I'd take a quick nap and rethink things when I wake up. Maybe, by then, the storm would dissipate and I could make my own way to town and tell them what I found. I slowly drifted into sleep. The sound of wind and rain, which I almost thought sounded like wingbeats of some massive bird, slowly lulled me into unconsciousness. In my dreams, I was running through the woods. I was being chased by something, something dark and evil and old. I was running to safety, but I didn't know what safety was. The storm still raged overhead. It raged so hard. I thought it would blow the world to pieces and force it all back together. I felt that evil thing grow closer, and I couldn't let it catch me. I had to run faster. As I ran, suddenly the forest around me opened into a clearing, and at the edge, I saw a cliff. I don't know how or why I knew, but I could somehow tell that the cliff dropped off into the storm, into the same clouds that hung heavy and dark overhead. I knew that those clouds were the only way to escape whatever was chasing me. When I made it to the cliff, I felt the claws of that dark thing brush my back just as I flung myself off the cliff. Just before I made contact, though, I felt myself jolt awake. I quickly sat up and surveyed my surroundings. It took a moment, but eventually I recalled where I was. I considered checking to see if the storm had subsided when another massive crack of thunder shattered the thought. I suppose I didn't need to check. I laid back against the wall and considered trying to doze back off, when suddenly another noise caught my attention. I wasn't sure what it was until I heard it again, a low scraping noise outside. Was it a tree branch brushing against the house? I heard the sound again and quickly dismissed the idea. It was long and drawn out and sounded like it was circling the house. I slowly got to my feet and lifted the rifle. Whatever it was, I didn't want to take any chances. I crept over to a window and peeked outside. It was too dark to make anything out, and I was about to turn away when I thought I saw something in the darkness. I slowly leaned in and tried to get a better look, 
when a sudden flash of light illuminated a sight that has haunted my mind ever since that day. A face stared back at me, but I hesitate to call it human. It was pale, with sunken cheeks and eyes as though whatever they belonged to was suffering from the worst kind of starvation. The eyes were yellow and bloodshot. They stared at me with such hunger that I felt like a stake in front of a lion. A few tufts of dirty hair cling to its head and its nose was practically gone, with nothing but bone remaining. But the mouth, the mouth is what froze my blood in my veins and assured me that this thing was not human. Its mouth was devoid of lips, as though they had been chewed off, and its teeth were long and jagged. They looked yellow and rotten, and I was sure I saw bits of meat stuck to them. I only saw that thing for a fraction of a second before the flash of lightning faded and I was plunged into darkness and silence once more. I slowly stepped away from the window, afraid that thing would leap through, when the door suddenly shattered inward and the creature entered and I got a good look at the rest of it. Its body was emaciated, like skin draped across a skeleton. Scraps of what had likely once been clothing clung to its body and I saw no marker of the creature's gender. Its limbs and whole body looked stretched and elongated, and its massive hands ended in claws where fingers had once been. Like the lips, the tips of the fingers looked like they'd been chewed off to allow the bones of the fingers to lengthen and sharpen to claws that could rend flesh from a body in one swipe. The thing focused its gaze on me and opened its mouth unnaturally wide before letting out a screech that nearly drowned the sound of the storm outside. I winced and immediately aimed my rifle at it and pulled the trigger. The monster's shriek was cut off by the sound of the gunshot, and the bullet caught it in the shoulder, flinging its body back against the wall with a spray of black blood. I quickly turned and ran past the creature and into the waiting storm outside. I was unsure if my shot had killed it or just wounded it, and I did not want to be there to find out. Though, I got my answer a moment later when I heard that demonic shriek once again. I didn't bother to turn and instead just ran even faster. The wind tore at my clothing and the rain pelted my face full force as I blindly charged forward. I'm not sure how long I ran before I felt my first foot catch something and I fell face first to the ground and felt the wind get knocked out of me when I landed. I managed to roll over, gasping for air and trying to see through the rain, when my eyes fell upon a creature chasing me still. It stopped when it saw I had fallen and began to slowly creep towards me. I desperately fired at it blindly, two shots getting in the chest and the third missing. The creature lurched back and more blood flowed from the wound, but it didn't stop. It let out an enraged hiss and prepared to lunge at me when suddenly the world was consumed by a blinding light. I, blinking my eyes, managed to see what had happened. Lightning had struck the creature. It lay on the ground, unmoving, smoke coming off its blackened body. I began to smile as I slowly made my way to my feet and considered what to do next, when it let out a heaving gasp and began to move. I was completely freaked out. I had shot that thing twice, and it had been struck by freaking lightning and was still alive? What chance did I have? I desperately searched for anything nearby that would help my situation as the creature painfully moved each limb individually as if testing that it all still worked. My eyes soon came to a cliff and I remembered my dream and I recalled how I had escaped that dark thing chasing me. Had it been a message? A prophecy? Before I could talk myself out of it, the creature shrieked once more and focused its yellow eyes on me. My body switched to autopilot and I immediately ran to the cliff. Even if I couldn't escape that thing, I didn't want to give it the satisfaction of tearing me apart. At least this way, it'll hopefully be quick. The creature chased close behind, but was luckily still recovering, or else I have no doubt it would have caught me. I hesitated for a moment at the edge of the cliff, wondering if what I was about to do was a good idea in any capacity, when suddenly the creature shrieked, and my fear made up my mind for me. Closing my eyes and swallowing hard, I stepped off the ledge 
and into the darkness below. I heard three things before I lost consciousness. A screech from the creature, a sound like a bird screeching, and thunder at the same time, and the beating of massive wings. I awoke in a completely different environment than where I was. I seemed to be in the middle of a massive empty plain. I was soaked to the bone and wandered in a daze until I found a road. And luckily, I made it to one almost at the same time as a truck was passing by. I waved them down and they pulled over. I peered into the window and saw that the driver was a rather attractive woman with brunette hair and green eyes. She rolled down the window and asked where I was heading. I must say she was very polite for someone speaking to a dirty, soaking wet man with a dazed look in his eyes. I asked if she could give me a lift to the nearest town, and she happily agreed to do so. Once I got in her car, it struck me that I had no idea where I was. I asked the woman, who introduced herself as Amber, and she let out a laugh and brought a smile to my face. My smile quickly faded when she informed me I was in Colorado. That was clear on the other side of the state, and I seemed to make it there in a single night. I calmed myself and did my best to simply chat with Amber, telling her I had gotten rained on last night and was just out of it because of the heat. She seemed to accept that, and we talked more until we reached a nearby town. She gave me her number and said we should keep in touch. I agreed and made my way to a motel where I bought a room with some cash I had. It took me a while to recover from that day. I'm still not sure what happened or how much of it was a dream or reality. Believe it or not, I still travel, although now I carry a handgun with me at all times. I even bought a small silver knife just to be safe. I did some research at an internet cafe trying to find clues as to what happened. Of course, I suspected that the thing that attacked me was a wendigo. I've heard enough stories to figure that out but it's the thing that saved me that got me curious. Have you ever heard of a thunderbird? Beings that are storms made sentient, lightning and thunder given life, forces of nature personified into protectors with their own sense of justice. I think that's what could have saved me that day. It would make the most sense, though I do wonder why. Maybe I just got lucky and the thunderbird took pity on me, or maybe there's something else that's too great for me to understand. Either way, I always find myself looking up into the storm clouds, curious to see if I'll see a shape soaring among them and hear that same call among the thunder and lightning. Story 3 by Reddit user jwill053 I had heard of skinwalkers before, but always just assumed they were Native American versions of skinwalkers, so I never gave them much thought. There was until last week when one of my co-walkers at my new job told me they were his most feared folklore creatures. He's originally from Utah, so that makes sense. He suggested some YouTube videos to watch on the subject, and after work that night, I binged about four or five of the videos. I totally understand his stance on them now. I live in rural South Carolina, so to be completely honest, I wasn't too worried about the possibility of running into one. My co-worker told me that they're basically a Midwestern thing. I'd be more worried about Wendigos if I were you, he joked the day after I watched the videos. We had a good chat about skimwalkers and Wendigos during our shift and just reveled in the creepiness of them. I mentioned how one of the tales said that the more you talk about skinwalks, the more they're drawn to you, and he made sarcastic ghost noises to keep the mood light. That night, I showed the videos to my fiancé. She was way more creeped out than I was. I became kind of obsessed. I love scary things and couldn't help but watch every video I came across. I discussed skinwalkers with my other horror enthusiast friends looked up skinwalker art, read true skinwalker stories on Reddit, and dove headfirst into all things skinwalker. This went on for a few days until I started feeling a little burned out on the subject. I live in a fairly nice neighbourhood 
where all the houses are on one side of the street. On the other side is property that used to belong to the local elementary school. The building is on the next street over, so basically it was like the school's backyard or whatever. The school shut down about 30 or 40 years ago, and the county just let nature reclaim it. So, directly across from my house is an old chain-link fence and just overgrown woods. Two nights ago, while I was smoking a cigarette, I heard leaves rustling across the street. I didn't bother looking up from my phone. I live across from woods, so it was probably a deer. The rustling stopped and then started again, and it sounded like whatever was over there was running back and forth along the fence line, panting like a dog. This caught my attention. There had been a few rabies cases in my town two months back, so a strange jog running around in the middle of the night was definitely something I'd want to keep an eye on. I look up from my phone in the direction of the sounds, and they just stop. It was like the thing knew I noticed it. I strained my eyes to see what it was, but it was obscured by the overgrowth. I didn't look away. Must have stared at the spot for at least a minute. It didn't make another sound, didn't move again, so I knew it was still there. A chill ran down my spine, and I began thinking of every Skinwalker video I had watched over the last week and felt sick to my stomach. I quickly put out my cigarette and went inside. The next morning I took my dog out for a short walk. She's a pug zoo named Honey and is like my child. Me and my fiancé taught her that pee-pee-poo-poo -poo means it's time to go outside to potty. It's the cutest thing. Anyway, this particular morning I take her out to the front yard to do her business. She pees and then walks around sniffing her for about five minutes before walking to the side of the street and sitting down. She's never done this before, so I was a little annoyed. I tugged on her leash lightly and tried to coat her back toward the house. Come on, honey. Got a poo-poo. She didn't budge. This dog could be stubborn sometimes, but this was something else. She tugged back against the leash and just stared across the street, sniffing the air occasionally. It was then that I realised she was staring at the exact spot where I heard that thing the night before. I got goosebumps, and I quickly picked her up and began walking back to the house. As I got closer, I noticed something on the ground on my front steps. It was one of the Halloween decorations my fiancé had hung up on our house. Plastic bag roses with plastic eyeballs and spiders on them. The stems were wire, so they could be wrapped around things to keep them secured. This flower was torn apart. Something had come onto my porch, taken down the flower and torn it apart, leaving it in front of my steps. I picked up the flower and threw it away. I didn't tell my fiancé. I didn't want her freaking out. The rest of that day went by uneventfully. That night I told my co-worker about what happened, and he looked a little concerned but brushed it off, said what I heard was most likely just a dog and the flower was probably knocked down by the wind. I had my doubts. As I was walking to my door after getting home from work last night, I heard that same panting as the night before and the clicking of claws against asphalt. I turned quickly to see a dog that looked like a brown mangy bull terrier hauling ass down my street. The street is probably about 40 feet away from my front porch, so I couldn't get a great look at it, but I could tell it was only running on three legs because one looked mangled. It turned quickly and darted into the tree line across the street through a part of the fence that had been pulled back. The fence wasn't like that earlier that day. That's when I noticed that the dog didn't have a tail. Skinwalker legends say that they take the form of an animal. They never have tails. I try to rationalise it to myself. Maybe it just had a stub tail that I missed because it was running. I immediately went inside. My fiancé was sitting on the couch petting honey. She could see I was upset and asked me what was wrong. I told her nothing, just almost got clipped by a car before I pulled into the driveway. She got up, hugged me, and cursed the person that almost hit me. 
She asked me if I could take Honey out for a pee-pee poo-poo because she had been creeped out by all the spooky videos we'd been watching and didn't feel comfortable going outside at night by herself. Honey perked up. She ran to the door and looked between me and the door, whining excitedly. I stared down at her for a moment before agreeing to it. I'll just keep her close to the porch, I thought. We walked off the porch and she immediately tried to walk to the street. I tugged on the leash and she tugged back. She eventually moseyed to the edge of the porch and peed. After, she began walking around sniffing. I told her the usual line. Come on, honey, got a poo-poo. She huffed at me, sniffed around some more and eventually started pooping. I was on edge the entire time we were outside, but being around her helped calm me down a little. Then I heard it from across the street. Come on, honey. My voice, in the exact same tone and inflection as I had just said it, it sounded staticky, like an old radio broadcast, but it was definitely my voice. Honey stopped what she was doing and stood alert. She looked over to me and cocked her head. Come on, honey. Got a poo-poo. Again, my voice called from across the street. Honey began whining, looking from me to the woods across the street. I picked her up and began backing up the steps, not taking my eyes off the part of the fence that had been pulled back. Honey, come. The voice sounded firm now, like it was getting aggravated. Honey squirmed in my arms, whining. I didn't know if she was trying to get out to go to the voice or run inside, but I wasn't taking any chances. I turned and bolted up the steps to the door. As I walked inside, I turned one last time to look across the street. There, standing in the part of the fence that was pulled back, was the dog. Its eyes were glowing a dull orange and it had its teeth bared. The face was all wrong like someone had taken a distortion tool and just dragged around some random features. Once again, I didn't tell my fiancé. Stupid horror movie cliché shit, I know. But I really didn't want her losing her shit. I just told her there's a strange dog running around the neighbourhood, so to not take honey out at night. Later last night, after we had gone to bed, I woke up to the sound of footsteps pacing back and forth outside my window. Against my better judgment, I rolled over to try and see it. I didn't. But the pacing stopped. Come on. Honey. My voice called out, cutting through the quiet of the night. I prayed my fiancé didn't hear it. It called out two more times before I heard it walking away. I didn't sleep a wink the rest of that night. Today. When I get to work, I'm going to ask my co-worker what I can do to get rid of this thing. I'm scared. I don't think there's a way. If anyone knows anything, please let me know. Thank you for watching and or listening to this video. Again, if you enjoyed my narration, please hit the like button. And if you don't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you thought of these stories in the comment section below and check out the links to the original posts in the video description. If you have a story you would like me to narrate on this channel, please email me at mrsinisterstories at gmail.com. If you want to share your appreciation even further, please consider a tip via my PayPal, or check out my Teespring store. There are some Mr. Sinister hoodies and t-shirts, plus an all-new design with a Wendigo, Dogman, Skimwalker and Bigfoot all on the Abbey Road Zebra Crossing. Perfect for anyone that's into these folklore stories. Thanks again for watching.